Hi, and welcome. This update video focuses on cross number nine. The fry are growing rapidly, and some are displaying more distinct colors. Additionally, I'll discuss an algae scraper sent by Hyger. For new viewers, my name is Ivan. My goal is to establish a stable Snow White guppy line. Starting with four randomly selected females, I've been systematically breeding them and their offspring to achieve this goal. Crosses four and nine are the most relevant for this video. Cross nine had a lengthy breeding period detailed in the previous update. The fry are now approximately two and a half months old and are fed a steady diet of baby brine shrimp and a variety of dry foods. The fry from Cross 9 resemble those from Cross 6, displaying a diverse range of colors. While seemingly random, we know that it isn't because the underlying genetics we've encountered in all of our other crosses are also influencing these phenotypes. Because the mothers to both Cross 6 and Cross 9 look like half black red guppies, we can reference Cross 6's results to anticipate potential outcomes in Cross 9. I've talked about the specific genes extensively in my other videos, but the short of it is that there are four likely genes that will contribute to 16 different phenotypes in Cross 9. Now, these fry are still too young to group into these phenotypes, but I plan on doing so when that time comes, likely and hopefully by the next update video. At the moment, there are fry that are beginning to show signs that they are males, and I've been slowly separating them into their own separate tank. Some of the ones that I'm most excited for are males that look like they are half black whites. There is something about them that looks very unique to me. There are also some fry that look gold in this brood. I'm pretty sure they won't stay gold though because they are still maturing, and the gold is likely just their base body color bleeding through before the rest of the colors catch up. This brood also has fry that look half black red and some that are leaning towards that white color that this whole project is based on. I'm quite pleased with this brood so far. I'm looking forward to seeing how these males mature further and how to proceed with them next. One of the things I do to prepare filming my guppies is making sure the front glass of my aquariums is clear of algae. I'm usually pretty good about keeping the front glass clear, but Sometimes I forget and only realize the issue during video editing. I typically clear the glass by grabbing a regular sponge and softly scrubbing away. I do this for every single one of my 14 10 gallon tanks. I try to make each separate tank land on each word of that sentence, but I ran out of words. But you get the point. This isn't really that big of a deal, but some days I'd just prefer not reaching elbow deep into the tanks. I was ready to purchase one of those magnetic algae scrapers when Hyger reached out and asked that I make a video on one of their products. So I figured why not try one of their algae scrapers? So full disclosure, they did send me the product for free. They are not paying me or asking me to say anything. They just wanted me to review it on video. But since I don't or haven't done reviews of anything, I'm just going to unbox it use it, and see if it works. So I try to make an unboxing video like those fancy ones that I've seen on YouTube. And honestly, I got bored watching it. It is a product in a box with some padding. So I'm just going to highlight different portions of the unboxing that I think might be the most interesting. But otherwise, the video will be sped up. The full product name is the HG124-S series of the Hyger Dual Blade Magnetic Glass Scrapers, or cleaners. It has some instructions that might be helpful for putting the plastic blades on, but like most arrogant men, I only look at instructions if I can't figure out how to use a product on my own. It comes with four total blades. The blades are fully plastic, which should work like using a plastic credit card to remove algae. The blades attach to the sides of the scraper, which I'll get to in a second. Like all scrapers, this one has a felted and a velcro-y side. As a side note, I've actually never tried using the felt side to remove algae, but I might try it when I get bored someday. But obviously the velcro-y bit goes inside the tank. 
Attaching the blades to the scraper can be a bit confusing if the blades start off upside down. There are two narrow slits on the blade side that fit two small raised rails on the scraper side. Once those are aligned, they just snap together. The blade attachments are actually kind of cool. I was curious to see how well they press up against the glass. Fortunately, I had a broken piece of glass left over from making lids to my tanks. Don't worry, I sanded the edges of the glass shard, so I shouldn't cut myself. It looks like it presses flush up against the glass, and hopefully this translates well to removing algae. To actually test this, I intentionally didn't clean the glass to the tank that holds my cross eight males. I actually placed a few females I fished out of my 30 gallon mixed tank to keep them from harassing each other. You'll see them later. The glass got pretty gnarly, to the point where it got really hard to see through the tank and focus on the fish inside. Perfect. I divided the front glass in half so I could compare the scraper to the sponge I typically use. I cleaned the right side with the sponge first before moving on to the scraper on the left side. After finishing the cleaning, I will say that it was faster using the sponge compared to the scraper. However, to reach into this tank, I use a stepladder, and it was nice not to need it when I was using the scraper. Obviously, it's important to be careful near the silicon seals with the blade, even if they are plastic. A sponge clearly has that advantage since you could get close to the edges of the glass without worrying about ruining the seal. For the most part, the glass was cleaned well by both the sponge and the scraper. I can see through the tank and focus on the fish inside. That's the most important bit for me. So the scraper is already useful in that regard. The tank edges on the side I use the scraper still have some algae, but that makes sense because I avoided the silicon as much as I could. Doing a water change revealed even more differences between the two methods. I was surprised to see so much algae still adhere to the glass after using the sponge. They are tiny dots and were hard to see against the black background. But out of the water like this, it was easy to spot. The scraper side looks much clearer, but also has a few of these algae spots. Have y'all ever noticed algae streaks on the glass a week after cleaning it? I wanted to see if the algae streaks looked any different between the two methods. This is the glass after about a week and a half. It isn't as overgrown as it was originally, but both sides can use a cleaning again. I didn't notice much streaking or algae growth patterns to indicate if one method was better than the other. I wanted to see the blades work up close. I tried my best to get a side shot of the scraper in action. This is no longer the front glass, but on the long side of the tank. I bought this tank off of Facebook Marketplace, and it had quite a bit of hard water buildup all over the glass. When I first set up the tank, I took care of the hard water buildup using a razor blade. However, I didn't remove it off the long glass sides. That being said, I didn't expect the scraper to clean the glass spotless here. Honestly, I think a razor blade is the only thing that can take care of the hard water buildup, but I was hoping to see the plastic blades in action. It's a bit hard to see, but it is removing the algae, slowly. It is more evident on the algae that sticks closer towards the top rim of the tank. This is the spot where the water splashes into the tank from my sump. Here, the blade is unsticking the algae film from the glass, but has a hard time resuspending it into the water column. The surface tension of the water above the surface makes it difficult to do that. However, the blades are a nice feature. It worked well on the front glass, but the side glass isn't a fair assessment because the algae tends to cling very well to the hard water stains. I'm glad I have a scraper I can use to quickly clean my tanks. It's useful to not have my hands wet right before filming. Handling a camera with wet hands really isn't a good idea. Last thing I wanted to talk about is this absolute unit of a ram's horn snail. I mean, just look at it. When I set this tank up, I originally put just a single snail in it. This snail had zero competition for the algae that was building up in the tank. As a result, it just kept growing. Personally, I like snails in my tanks, and I feel like they do a decent job at keeping the algae in check. Because this experiment with the scraper is now over, I added a couple more snails into the tank, 
and there have been a lot of babies showing up lately. But it was interesting to me that the Goliath of a snail got so big because of no competition. I honestly didn't think they ever got that big. Just look at it compared to a quarter. It's curious to me that with an abundance of food, the snails are prone to reproduce. But by reproducing, they are creating more competition for themselves that will reduce their fitness. Granted, the environment in the tank doesn't reflect the environment they are originally from. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit different. Cross 9 is still coloring up, but they should mature far enough along to start phenotypically sorting them by the next video. I'm hoping that there will be some males that show that white characteristic that this whole channel was built around. If you are interested in following along with the rest of this journey, please consider subscribing. Cross 11 will be the focus of the next video. This cross is the first one where I expect that we will achieve a brood that is all phenotypically identical, and therefore that much closer to achieving my first goal. Here are a few update clips of my other crosses so far. Crosses 10 and 12 have unfortunately not produced fry yet. Cross 13 should be really close to dropping their first batch of fry. I'm excited for this one because this is the first time I'm using a male that is gray based rather than blonde based. Based on some of the suggestions I've read in the comments, I set up a new cross between two cross 8 siblings. The male with the iridescent forehead and a female that had a monotonal iridescent blue and white color to her tail. I prefer to stay away from sibling crosses but I figured this will be the best way to fix the iridescent forehead trait. This is the beginning of cross number 14. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in seeing how I think the guppies for cross 9 will end up looking like, check out this video. The video goes over the results to cross 6. The mothers to this brood phenotypically look almost identical to the mothers of cross 9. I hope to see you in the next one.